Hi there, Builder Blog. Captain Zach Sparrow here, and we are redesigning Scorpios today. And this is kind of what I've always wanted the Builder Blog to do. I wanted to show you from going from ground zero to I have an idea in my head to we are going to design the whole thing, build the whole thing, wire the whole thing, test the whole thing, enter the whole thing, go to the Destructathon, do that, then get on TV with it. Hey there, Builder Blog. If you could change one thing about Scorpios, what would you change? Leave your comment in the comment section below. And if you like it, subscribe, you will see this entire process. So let's get started. Um, I'm after the Champions Tournament, which everyone has now seen and I can talk about without a spoiler warning. Uh, we're scrapping the robot and starting over. In fact, the only thing we're going to keep is this. That's right. The trademark armor from Van Bevers and our mag motors, and besides that, we're redesigning everything else. Um, I'm actually going to pull heavily from our Secrets Of videos to see what the other champions have done and what we can do to improve, but I do want to particularly make a shout out. Um, I have seen a robot at Robo Games that truly impressed me, and I'm going to borrow heavily from it, and uh, I want to show you guys the right way to do this. I know a lot of people give uh, Riptide a very hard time for the way he borrowed from Lynx, without asking. And uh, I am going to ask this builder first to heavily borrow from his robot. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to offer him the driving position on the Scorpios team uh, when I ask to use his design. But the robot I'm talking about is Shook. And if you watched RoboGames, you know Shook took home the gold title. And he finally solved the magnet issue, which I've been struggling with for the last two seasons. When you have a two-wheeled robot and you try to put magnets on it, it's really hard. Because you're going to pull the wheels down and you're going to pull the front edge down. And that sounds good in theory. But how much you pull the wheels and how much you pull the front edge varies. This just works so much better for four-wheel robots who actually get to uh, just put the magnets in the middle and it pulls wheels down no matter what. And then they can use a secondary system to hold the wedge at the pressure they want. Uh, so this was the first big hurdle, and I love the way Shook solved it. So, because I, I love my wheels. My wheels are great. They push everything. And everyone always wonders how many magnets we're running for our wheels to work this well. But until the last season, there was no magnets. And the wheels worked great. But the problem with that wheel is it's very squishy. It's what makes it, gives it so much traction because it actually bites the ground really well, but it's terrible for magnets. As you try to put a magnet on the base of the robot, the wheel squishes and then the magnet's dragging and you have poor performance, hence season seven. Um, but, but Shook solved this and got to use grippy tires by putting double stack soft squishy tires in the back double stack soft squishy tires in the back and then hard little tires up front and then he put his big heavy magnets right by those hard tires and this was brilliant this was absolutely brilliant and then you know he had his wedge um what this does is your back wheels still get to be soft and squishy and have great traction and the front wheels, which have less traction because they're a harder compound, but they don't deflect under the magnet force, they pull down and keep your chassis from wheeling to the ground, but make sure the magnets don't drag, and you still get all the benefits of the cool, squishy wheels in the back. This is the main theory I am redesigning the entire robot around. And I'm going to borrow something from our Vlad the Impaler episode. If everybody has skipped Secrets of Vlad, you really shouldn't. He has some great techniques that have been lost to the current building community. And in order to get some more performance out of our mag motors, so mag motors have been around in the sport for, oh God, almost two decades. And they're still one of the top motor. Uh, Witch Doctor has used them. Bite Force used them to win all their giant nuts. Sawblay still uses one to swing his arm. Like, Almost every champion robot has a mag in it. And uh, people have seem to have discovered almost every single trick with mags, but I'm going to try to take one of Vlad's tricks and put it in. And that's forced air cooling. He actually drilled holes in his motors where there's exhaust holes up here in the front 
and then holes in the back, and he put a ducted fan that forced cold air through. So it would blow hot air out the front. And that allowed him to run over voltage and actually have an edge over all the other competitors. So I want to try to take this magnet technique and this motor technique and integrate all of that into a new robot. So if I'm going to pull this off, I need to get a quote from the Black Dragon team for soft or for uh, nice hard wheels, some Brazilian wheels up front. I'm going to put my normal wheels in the back with long mags and the usual Waiachi gearbox. And I'm going to have to see if I can find another Waiachi gearbox and a short mag to go on the front. And the way I'm going to try to get weight for all this is Scorpios is going to be aluminum now. I know. We've had our amazing Van Bever sponsor since the very beginning, and we've always made an entirely steel robot. And we're actually one of the very last ones. Uh, Rusty is also entirely steel, and so is Scorpios. Um, but most of our competitors have hybrids of materials. Uh, and most of them are using aluminum frames with AR400 on the front. So we're going to finally adopt this technique, and we're going to keep our AR400 wedge, but we're going to go to an aluminum chassis so we can put a few more motors in the robot. So let's try to draw this out. Hey Scorpios Builder Blog, the winner of last week's giveaway for the Rusty Plushie is Web Deck. He wrote us a thing. Tell Zach that it is paramount that he finish the mount. It's not an insurmountable task like climbing every mountaintop or performing a perfect triple-double dismount. Any further amount of delay is tantamount to punishment. A plus. Uh, yes, you win. So first things first. I've got my long mats with the standard Waiachi gearbox and the tires I love. And I've got this all set up in a line. And I've got too many mags and a Waiachi gearbox, which I haven't settled on the gear ratio yet. And I need to figure out what size tire I'm going to put on this. So as opposed to doing this uh, pure math, I'm going to show you the quick way engineers do it. And it's finding a website that helps you do speed calculations. So we're starting at this website so we can do our speed calculations. And the first thing we need is the RPM of the motor. So we're going to need this, the gearbox ratio, and the size of the tire. My tire is an 8-inch diameter tire. And to get the motor speed, we're actually going to go to mag motor. Now, I've been using these motors for 20 years. And yes, they did start sponsoring me in this last year. And if you come to their website, we go to combat robots. Oh, look at all these famous robots that have used mag motors. There's Bite Force, there's Witch Doctor, oh, there's Scorpios! Okay, I'm excited. I, this makes me feel like a legend because I'm actually on their website. Now, these are the ones with Paul's mods, which have the lowered wire duck and them cut off on the side. And it's the one I like using. And specifically, this is the one Scorpios uses. And we need its RPM at 24 volts. It travels... 5,000 RPM. Now, our gearbox is a 12 to 1 gearbox, so we take 5,000 and we divide it by 12. Please forgive me through the magic of editing. You won't realize I pulled out my phone to do 5,000 divided by 12, which is 416. So it's 416 RPM at an 8-inch diameter, and that calculates out to... Dun, dun, dun. Let's do surface speed in inches per second, which is 174 and a quarter. We're just going to call it 174 inches per second. Now that is what the big tire travels at. I want to see, I can vary the gear ratio and I can vary the gear ratio and the tire size to see if I can get something else to equal 174. So let's first go back and find out what the small mag motor turns at. Oh God, I like being on this website. Um, I'm sorry, 20 years of competing. It's like seeing your face on a billboard. All right. Uh, these motors turn at 6,100 RPM. And there they are. They're so pretty. And I really do think the Waiachis need to update their website because when I type this in, it takes me to their Facebook. And their website isn't down here. Ugh. 
But the fast way to get to it is you go to their Facebook. And then you come down here, Waiachi. Ah, this is the website I want. Let's come to shop. We're going to go to the planetary gearboxes. And now we're going to see which sizes they have. So I'm using the 12 to 1. I'm going to have to do one of the lower ones. So we're going to try an 8 to 1. So we're going to take the 6,100 RPM and divide that by 8. And then we're going to see if there's a reasonable sized wheel we can put on it to match my other setup. So through the magic of math, I determined if you take the 6,100 and divide that by 8, you get 762. And yes, this is that moment in robotics that your math teacher always talked about where you're going to need math to do what you really want to love to do. So I'm trying to take this motor, I'm going to put the 8 to 1 gearbox on it. Look, it's even pictured on there. It's like a lot of us combat guys do this. And then if I don't change my tire, that calculates out to 300 and 19 almost double what I want now that's actually an interesting piece of information since this is a straight up double of what I want we're gonna try a four inch tire and see how close that gets us so we're gonna hit calculate again and that got me 159 now keep in mind I'm trying to get to 174 because the whole point of this is I want different motors and different tires to match. That way when I drive forward, they all drive forward at the same speed. This is a tricky thing Ripperoni had to do in order to use two different size tires but still drive straight. And this is something Witch Doctor also had to do considering they have little tires on the front and big tires on the back. So since this number is still too slow, I need to make the tire bigger so let's try five inches. I want to try to stay on a whole number because that'll make getting the tires easier and finding replacements easier. And that overshoots. Remember, I wanted 174. So as much as I would like a whole number, let's try 4.5. You know, it's f technically five inches off, but I'm going to take that. So we're going to use a mini mag with an 8 to 1 and a 4 and a half inch tire. And we're going to use a long mag with a 12 to 1 gearbox and an 8 inch tire. And that was the math. And so we're just going to go ahead and slap a 4 and a half inch tire on there. Visibility. Psh. Visibility. Psh. Yay. I've got my drive set up. So this is the motors I am planning. And normally I spend some time kind of orientating stuff this way. The way I picked this gap right here is uh, very simple. I picked that based off of the size of my batteries. Boop. Boop. And then I wanted to leave enough room for me to put foam around them and then put the connectors here on the side. Uh, then I tried to see what it would look like if I shove my servo parts in there. So that is the apex gearbox. That's what actually gears down the arm. So that's this. And then I'm going to put the motor that's supposed to help drive that thing, which is this. So there's hopefully to move the arm and here's to spin the blade. Then I want four aluminum pieces going this way. And so, let's see if I can find those. Visibility, boop. Visibility, boop. Now, my engineering manager likes to call this drawing the forest and not the trees. And what he means by that is, if I can find my other thing, um, don't get bogged down in the details. Like, I don't have all the holes, I don't have the pockets, I don't have the lightning, I don't have any of the mounting stuff in here. I'm just trying to get a sense of where everything would sit and if this would be a viable method forward. So I've got four aluminum plates dividing everything up. I kind of see that I have to pocket this in the back so the motor tab can go through here. I have to machine all the stuff for the servo here. I have to machine the stuff to do the belt tensioning into this. 
and this is me trying to draw the forest and not the trees. So I'm not going for too many details, but I'm trying to get a sense of how big it would be and the weight and size this would take. And all of, most of these components, the motors, the gearboxes, the wheels, the batteries, I can actually just throw that in an Excel sheet and get a calculation of how heavy they are. And that's definitely my next step. But from here, I'm just gonna do a few more things I know I need. First, I'm gonna put in the clutch that helps not, that helps gearbox not die. Then I'm gonna put the gear on it. Boop. I'm gonna make a quick little back plate. Boop. Right back here. Yeah. And then we're gonna make another back plate. Boop. And then we're just gonna put a little plate in the middle. Boop. Then we're gonna put an arm piece in. Boop. Arm piece in. Boop. Yeah. So I'm hoping to switch to a 16 inch diameter weapon. And yes, for everyone who's been screaming, Zach, put a wheelie bar on it. Just like I told Jameson after he told me he borrowed my idler idea, I told him I was gonna borrow this idea from him and I got his approval. So slightly more saw blazy arm. I'm admitting I'm copying it from him, but he admitted he copied the idler from me. First saw blaze had the weapon motor in the arm. He got more consistent by taking one of my tactics. And I'm going to get less wheelie -y by taking one of his. All right, and then quick blade design. Whoosh, whoosh, oh yeah, whoosh. Wah! Okay. And put the idler in. And let's let's slap our good old armor on the front. Now I've modified this a little bit. Whoosh. Um, this is our classic armor with the ears we made to fight rotator. And I, I discovered these have quite the fringe benefit if they really screw up verticals. So I'm going to start putting these on all the armor configurations. And then I made a little wheel guard here for my little wheels that I need to stay in good condition so the magnets don't hit the ground. So this is me trying to draw the forest instead of the trees by doing a rough outline of kind of what I'm hoping the new Scorpios will look like. So the front, this whole front piece is going to be AR-400, and then six wheels. There's technically six motors inside that robot, but I still need to design top plates. I need to design the new sprocket, new idlers, and a new arm. Now I need to detail all this. So there's a lot to do but I wanted everyone to get an idea of the direction I want to push and the direction I want to go and how hard I want this thing to swing. Um, I'm also, sorry, one other thing Adam and I talked a lot about. We're going to do two belts. We have never gotten our motor power up to the blade effectively, and it smokes so much with the single belt. So we're actually going to try double belting this in order to transfer more power up to the blade and instead of our 11 pound blade, this is a 20 pound blade. We're gonna try to make a much lighter arm and we have contacted Huge to get some of the awesome Tegris he's been using to hopefully help us make the arm more rigid and to help light make lightweight versions of some internal parts. So guys, uh, this is about to be a very long journey and we're gonna have many more CAD sessions, but I hope you've enjoyed this inside look on how I picked my motors how I did my tires, how I did the spacing, and all the things I added. And let's see if we can design a giant nut winning battle bot together. So like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. See ya. Oh God, why? This is why the CAD never gets done. Shoot. Shoo, shoo, shoo.